Okay, so today I'm going to be talking to you about um, the rest of Romans, but more than that, I'm going to be talking to you about sort of the burning question that might be on your minds. Uh, are, are Christians really Jews? Or what happened for us to separate from Judaism? You know, all throughout the Gospels, all throughout the letters of Paul and Peter and James, um, they're talking about this Jewish context that they're in. And so, you know, we want to sort of try and figure out what happened, why we split off, why we're a separate religion, and um, sort of the background to that for our lecture today. And so, these are the goals of the lecture. Just point blank, discover our Jewish context up to, the, up to and following the time of Jesus, to correlate the uh, Jewish theologies with Paul, and also question how we interpret Paul, how we use a modern lens to look at what Paul is writing and sort of question whether or not that's actually what Paul was saying or what Paul was intending. Um, and then finally, just to look at the mystery of the Jewish and Christian split and when that happened, how it happened and a few of those other things there. So our Jewish context. The Jewish context, if you remember way back in Core 3, I gave you a lecture on the covenant. And really, that is the Jewish context for much of the history that we're going to be studying here. In fact, it's still the Jewish context for Judaism today. It is that covenant event. It is the bringing together or the making of the contract between the people of Israel and God and Yahweh. And so you see this uh, beginning with the promises for Abraham. Um, God promises Abraham to make um, him the father of many nations. He, he will have many, many offspring. He will be the father of this great nation, Israel, uh, that will inherit this covenant. And then so you have the promise in the call of Moses where you actually receive the law, the Torah, from Yahweh. That contract between the people and Yahweh um, is delivered through Moses. And then finally, um, we have also the prophets in the Old Testament and their interpretation of what the covenant is and how the people of Israel should be following that or how they're not following that particular covenant. And so that is the root metaphor, the beginning of any of the Jewish discussion that we have for any of the types of sects or um, contexts that we have for uh, Judaism. And so I wanted to look at a few of these. these there's actually one more in the uh, uh, following slides, but um, I wanted to look at a few of the sects of Judaism. Now the Essenes, it's actually a uh, the word Essenes or the sect Essenes uh, references a few, a variety of different sects of Judaism. It's sort of a big group of Judaism. Um, they were the ones that uh, went off into the desert. They have a, the messianic expectation. And they start around the second century BCE and go to the first century BCE. Uh, the revolutionaries, these are the zealots that we hear about in the Gospels. Um, we see them starting too at the second century BCE and ending in the first century CE. The Pharisees, the Pharisees were far more established than any of these other groups here. And um, they were the ones that uh, most of the populace, most of the, uh, the Jews at this time uh, found popular. The, the, the Pharisees were the popular sect for Judaism at this time. And they started around the 6th century BCE and then went to the 1st century CE. And then finally you've got the Sadducees. And the Sadducees, you can see, started just like a lot of the others in the 2nd century BCE and the 1st century CE. Now, some questions that might be going through your mind, why are all these sects starting around the same time and why did they all end around the same time? In fact, all of them ended uh, around the first century CE. And so maybe you could, in your discussion classes, uh, do a little research and find out why the, all these sects here ended at around the same time. So look at, let's look at the Essenes and some of their theology. 
that they've got. Uh, the Essenes believed in an immortal soul, um, and they had uh, was it communal possessions. So they lived in sort of a commune-style lifestyle. They were monastic. Um, a lot of them went off into the desert uh, for purity reasons. And they had uh, apocalyptic expectations. Um, they were expecting the end of the world to happen within months. Um, they they uh, were expecting uh, not just one Messiah, but two Messiahs to come. One that would be from the line of Aaron uh, and be a priestly Messiah, and then one that would be from a royal Messiah, so the line of David that you've got. And so they were expecting these two different uh, messiahs to come back. Some of the things that were interesting about their uh, theologies is that they believed um, in their immortal soul. They believed that when they were to be resurrected, that they would become angels. And so if you think about um, some of the texts in the New Testament when they talk about angels and how Jesus was higher than the angels, um, I believe that they're speaking directly to this theology right here where um, a lot of Jewish sects believe that when you died, your soul was then raised up on the level of the angels that you've got. So the revolutionaries, um, they refused any, any type of Roman rule. Now these other sects here had various levels of acceptance of Rome's rule. And in fact, um, when we get to the Sadducees, you'll see that they actually um, uh, benefited from Roman rule because uh, the Romans put them into positions of power. So uh, the revolutionaries here, they were the ones that refused any Roman rule. They rose up against Rome in 66 CE um, in a great war against Rome. They lost. And um, this is actually why uh, all those sects of Judaism ended around the first century CE. It is, it's this war against Rome, and then Rome brings the hammer down and breaks up all of these different uh, sects, and Jerusalem is sacked, and so they have to reorganize themselves after this. Um, their focus is primary political. There's not a lot of theology behind it. They do have um, messianic figures that are leading them in this war, uh, but it's more of a political motive that they're using. And uh, another name for these revolutionaries uh, is the fourth philosophy, or the zealots, is the way that they're referred to in the biblical text. Now, the Pharisees, as I mentioned before, they're the most popular sect of Judaism. And let me stop for a second. Am I going too fast for you to write this stuff down? Are you good? Okay. All right. I just want to check. All right, so the Pharisees were the most popular sect of Judaism. Um, they also believed in a resurrection. Uh, they're considered the most accurate in interpreting the law, at least by the um, Jews at, of this time. And after that great war with Rome, these, the Pharisees are the ones that actually become the root of the rabbinic uh, tradition, the rabbinic sect which then becomes modern Judaism that we have today. And so the Pharisees here are really the, um, they, they are the, uh, the root of what, what we call Judaism today. And so when we look at some of their theologies, we can see how that theo theological strain moved through history coming from them. And also, if we look at early uh, rabbinic writings, we can then look back at what the Pharisees um, would have possibly been thinking. And the Pharisees, although they are um, portrayed as conservative in the biblical texts, they would have been the ones that are, were interpreting the Torah more liberally. Um, they actually had, for their particular sect, they had to interpret uh, the writings uh, in the Old Testament in a very liberal way to justify that their sect existed. 